guys. Okay, reproductive system. Monday the 24th. We are rocking this, guys. So again, we're going to touch on the most important parts of the reproductive system for males and females. So for your final exam, you will have two pictures that I'm going to include. And it's going to be, I'll show you them as we go along, but one will be of the a sagittal section of the male reproductive system, and it's also a picture of the female reproductive system. Are you stretching, Greg, or do you have a question? What's up? Oh, yes. I will make sure that it is, it is there. There is also a handout on Moodle that has the pictures. What do you mean? Oh yeah, you can put anything you want on your piece of paper. Are those the only pictures on the Yes. Oh, yeah. You're picking up what I'm throwing down. Oh. All right. So let's get going. Did you say you're smelling something? No. Okay, good. I did take a shower. All right. Um, the reproductive system. Okay. So we're gonna touch on the males first. This is no, you know, it's just the order it was in the book, so don't. Okay, so reproductive system in both males and females, it controls both your primary sex characteristics, which is basically what sex you were born with, and then your secondary sex characteristics, which develop at puberty. Okay, um, so the reproductive system and its respective hormones control, you know, primary, sex primary and secondary sex characteristics, but it doesn't just affect the reproductive system alone. It also affects integument, oops, different color, integumentary system, muscular system, and skeletal system. So all of these are also part of, or are affected by the reproductive system. Okay, so in biology, one of the things that is held as true is one of the important aspects of a living organism is being able to reproduce. So if we're talking about Darwin and natural selection and ultimate success, it's being able to reproduce and pass your genes on to the next generation. So in biology, it's considered an essential ability of a organ living organism. So males and females need to have functional sex organs in order to reproduce. So what do females have or need? What do they do? Their reproductive system. They produce oocytes, so those eggs, which usually is just one a month that ovulates. Um, her body is designed to receive sperm, to support a developing embryo and fetus, to give birth to a baby, and to provide nourishment for that child, for that baby. So... Oh, I didn't put that as well as infant and birth and nourish. How do you spell nourish? We'll just say breast milk. That's better. Okay, and so for males, sorry guys, this is a little bit less what you guys are do. Um, your main job is to produce sperm and transfer that sperm to the female's reproductive system. Yep, I think you can do it when the time is right, of course. Uh, so, major structures of the male reproductive system, testes, um, many different ducts, and we'll look at those. Some, there is different accessory glands and some lots of supporting structures. So when we get to some pictures, I'll be able to explain some of that a little bit more to you. And so, you will, we'll go over this, the male, the major male reproductive hormones and the structures of the reproductive system. So that will be part of your identification, okay, which I did pre-write down here so you would see that. Um, this is not the picture, but this is one picture that, this is the sagittal section. I forgot I want you to identify the frontal section. I'll show you the right picture. But this shows you, hey, look, first of all, we can see the bladder. It's right up in front. And this one looks like it's a little bit full. But when it's empty, it's kind of resting behind the pubic region of your coxal bone. 
but when it does fill up with urine, it basically stretches and moves upwards in your abdominal cavity, which is kind of neat. So there's a lot going on in the reproductive system, but we're going to focus on a different picture, which is coming up in a bit. So, um, but first, talking about did I did I star that one as I was going through? Sorry. Okay. So major portions of the male reproductive anatomy, talking about the scrotum, actually a really important function of the scrotum besides housing the testes, which produce the sperm. Um, so superficially, the scrotum on the outside, there's a structure called the rafe, which is just like a ridge that divides the scrotum in half, essentially. It looks like it does. And on either side, you have one testes on one side and another on the other. Um, and that ridge actually develops in utero because when you're developing, whether or not you have X, Y chromosomes or XX chromosomes, so whether you're male or female, you all start development the same way. And if there is not enough testosterone present in utero, males will actually develop as females. Okay? So that can explain some issues in the world. But what happens is if you have XY chromosomes and you're developing properly, the labia majora of a female essentially fuse together and form the scrotum for the male. So that fusion of the, the two labia majora form where they fuse together forms that wraith. Okay, um, there are two muscles that you do need to know associated with the male reproductive anatomy and the scrotum. And so one is called the dartos, oh, this is a bad color to use, sorry. One is called the dartos muscle, and the dartos muscle causes the scrotum to reduce overall, so it just kind of causes it to shrink up, okay? Then there is another set of muscles called the cremaster muscles, and these actually will contract and pull the testes closer to the body, and there's a reason for this. First of all, the scrotum holds the testes outside of the abdominal cavity, helps to keep the temperature slightly lower than the temperature inside the body because sperm can only develop in a narrow range of temperature and inside your body, normal body temperature is too high. So it's housed in the scrotum outside the body cavity and the dartos muscle and the cremaster muscle allow the scrotum to contract and bring the testes closer to the body if they're too cold or can actually cause them to relax and get a little further away from the body cavity if they're too warm. And so it helps to control the temperature for optimal sperm production. Okay, so this is a picture from actual original Gray's Anatomy book and just illustrating, so here the cremaster muscle is in red, and this is the one that actually can pull the testes in closer to the body. And the dartos muscle, it's the blue, I should draw it in blue. It kind of surrounds or is part of the wall of the scrotum, so that just that's what causes it to um, decrease overall in size. Okay, so a little bit more about the testes. They are both exocrine and endocrine. So more than just the pancreas, because we learned the pancreas is endocrine and exocrine, so is the testes, and so is the ovary, so are the ovaries. So sperm is the major exocrine secretion. Okay? They are made and they're secreted into ducts. They don't travel in the bloodstream. But then the endocrine portion, you have special cells that produce sex hormones like testosterone, okay? So sperm, oh, wrong color again. I apologize, it keeps changing. So sperm is the exocrine. Testosterone is endocrine, okay? So a little bit more on the anatomy of the testes. So there are several, there's 
several connective tissue layers surrounding the testes. One of them is called the tunica albuginea, and this kind of divides the scrotum in half, but not completely, so that the testes have separate little compartments. Um, so it's around the testes, and then it kind of enters inside, kind of like with the lymph nodes, how the connective tissue kind of went inside the lymph nodes and made all these little caves, essentially. That's what the tunica albuginea is doing, too. Now, we'll have a picture in just a second. The septa divides each testes into different lobes, and the seminiferous tubules, you got to know what this is and why they're important. Seminiferous tubules within the testes is where sperm is produced. Okay, very important. So this is part of your exocrine. Notice they're in tubes. And then we have interstitial cells that are producing our testosterone. Testosterone. Test I can't spell. Okay, testosterone. And so that's your endocrine function. Okay, this picture hopefully helps a little bit. So if we're looking at just one testes, um, so the tunica albuginea, dude, where'd you go? Oh, right here. So circled in red. So it's this white connective tissue. Okay, so this white connective tissue, and it forms these little septums, which divide the seminiferous tubules into little lobes. Okay, little lobules, if you want to say. And remember that within those seminiferous tubules is where the sperm is produced. This is not a picture you'll have to identify. This is a nice picture, though, that gives you the anatomy of a testes. Notice, here's the spermatic cord. This is one of those structures we are looking for with the mink. And I've, a lot of you guys have good spermatic cords intact. That's something you have to identify. Um, but note, we can see closely here that within the spermatic cord, we have the vas deferens, which carry the sperm out, 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 out of the testes and up and around the male reproductive system and finally out. Also contains blood vessels, artery, nerve, and vein. And I believe it also has lymphatic, which is not illustrated there. Okay, a little tiny bit more about the anatomy of the testes, and we'll move on. So there's three more structures I wanted to point out. Oh, got to change my color again. Thank you. Um, the tubuli recti, the reet testes, and the efferent ductules. Okay, so I'm going to go to this picture again because it's better. So tubulus rectus or tubulus recti. And notice it's this little straight part of a tube. It's this little tiny section that connects the seminiferous tubules to the next section, which is called the reet testis, or reet testes. And this is just like a network of tubes. So this is where formed sperm travels through the reet testes and then enters into these longer straight tubes right here called the efferent ductules. And then from there, the sperm enters the epididymis, okay? So if we back, go forward again, the tubular recti, these little really short tubes from the seminiferous tubule to the reet testes is just where the sperm empty into. Then the reet testes is this network and just receives the sperm and then moves it on to the efferent ductules where it receives the sperm and then into the epididymis. Interesting to note, oh, color again, that in the efferent ductules, it's lined with ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. There's not very many places in our body where we find that. So we've talked about it in the respiratory system in detail, but now we also see it within the testes. Okay, and the function of that is to move sperm out of the testes and continue it along its journey of maturation. So maturation of sperm can take up to over 70 days, um, but it's constantly being produced. 
Okay. But, okay, wait, I keep going, I'm sorry. So moving from the produ production of sperm, sperm real quick, I want to talk about the development of the testes um, and the descent and when that occurs. So the testes in their development they actually develop inside the abdominal cavity retroperitoneally, just like the kidneys are retroperitoneal. And we're not going to go through all of this, these very big detail, these little details, but important part is, you know, the testes are developing and in the inguinal region of the body, so near the groin region, there are what are called inguinal canals in males. And these form between 14 and 28 weeks, so there's a long window of time when these inguinal canals will form. And once they do form, then the testes that are developing in the abdomen move out of the abdominal cavity through those inguinal canals and then into the scrotum. Okay? And so those inguinal canals will then close up, but there'll always be a weak point in the abdomen. And it's a very common place for people to have, for males to have, um, oh, why am I blanking on it? Hernias. Um, so, looking at this picture here, it kind of illustrates the descent of the testes. So, all of, all of it's developing inside the ab abdominal cavity, and once we have inguinal canals form, note there's two. There's an internal inguinal ring and an external inguin inguinal ring, and then you have like this actual canal that the testes travel through and then into the scrotum. So remember that's between four, oh, the colors. <laughs> remember that's between 14 and 28 weeks of development, okay? A um, little bit more on the descent of the testes. The important part down here is what I want you to see. So most uh, fetuses, their testes descend by 28 weeks. So 79% have them descend by 28 weeks in utero. By nine months in utero, so they're almost ready to be born, so um, you have over 98% of infants, male infants, have their testes descended. So the majority of male infants are born with the testes already descended. Oh no, we're done. Okay, so we'll continue to talk about that on Friday and do some important aspects of the female reproductive system. Thank you very much, guys. Remember, you have.